Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited. Industry killer? Senators introduce new drone legislation. Navy Leapfrog's Fleet Week accident claims a life. And Lockheed Martin's LM100J makes its first flight. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's May 30th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A curious, if not confusing, new bill authored by a bipartisan mix of senators pretty much wants to do away with federal preemption and give state and local governments the power to regulate drones flying under 200 feet AGL. The chaos potential, of course, is huge. Senators Tom Cotton, Diane Feinstein, Mike Lee, and Richard Blumenthal have introduced the Drone Federalism Act. The senators errantly insist that in the time frame between September 2015 to September 2016, nearly 1,500 drone incidents were reported. Mind you, such reports have previously been picked apart elsewhere and by a number of authorities. The act claims to recognize the FAA's general authority over the NAS while empowering state, local, and tribal governments to issue restrictions on the time, manner, and place of drone operations within 200 feet of the ground or structure. These could include reasonable low altitude speed limits, local no-fly zones, temporary restrictions, and prohibitions on reckless or drunk operators. The bill asserts that the federal government will respect private property rights to the airspace immediately above a property up to the first 200 feet. The bill also directs the FAA to partner with cities and states to test out different approaches and form the Unmanned Traffic Management Pilot Program and report best practices. Manned aviation is exempted from this bill's scope. Normally, Memorial Day is a celebration of those who have fought for the freedoms so many of us take for granted. It's a great day to get out, catch an air show, a barbecue, and hopefully just break and give thanks for those who got us here. And sometimes it's an even sadder day when one of those celebrations goes badly, as it did Sunday as part of Fleet Week. A member of the U.S. Navy's elite parachute team, the Leapfrogs, was pronounced dead Sunday at 1.10 p.m. after a parachute malfunction, and he landed in the Hudson River doing an aerial demonstration at Liberty State Park in Jersey City, New Jersey. The service member was retrieved immediately by the U.S. Coast Guard. The accident occurred at approximately 12.10 p.m. Sunday during a planned Fleet Week New York event that featured a coordinated parachute jump by the Leapfrogs. Rear Admiral Jack Scorby, Commander, Navy Region Mid-Atlantic said, Our hearts and prayers go out to his family. And I ask for all of your prayers for the Navy SEAL community who lost a true patriot today. The incident is under investigation and the service member's name is being withheld until family notifications are complete. All of us at ANN send our prayers to the family and friends of this fallen warrior. After the break, Lockheed Martin's LM100J takes flight. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. 
the first Lockheed Martin LM100J commercial freighter aircraft achieved a critical milestone with the completion of its first flight May 25th. Wayne Roberts, chief test pilot for the LM100J program, said, I was proud to fly the first flight of our LM100J. It performed flawlessly, as is typical of our military C-130 J new production aircraft. This first flight followed the same test flight route over North Georgia and Alabama that is used for all C-130J Super Hercules aircraft. The LM-100J will complete initial production flight tests and then begin FAA-type certificate update flight test requirements. The LM-100J is the 17th different mission capability developed for the C-130J Super Hercules, and it is an updated version of the L-100 cargo aircraft, which Lockheed Martin produced from 1964 to 1992. Lockheed Martin officials submitted a program notification letter to the FAA on January 21st, 2014, for a type design update to this aircraft, a civil certified variant of the C-130J Super Hercules, to be marketed as the LM-100J. The LM-100J incorporates technological developments and improvements over the existing L-100s that result from years of C-130J operational experience, including more than 1.5 million fleet-wide flight hours. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. This June 7th through 11th, see a B-29, C-45, and T-6 Warbird up and close and personal at the Hagerstown Regional Airport Terminal in Maryland. The event is a byproduct of the CAF Air Power History Tour. The CAF Air Power History Tour continues June 12th through 14th at the Newport News Williamsburg International Airport in Virginia with the B-29 and T-6 in attendance. And on June 16th through 18th at the Wilmington International Airport in North Carolina, the CAF Air Power History Tour brings the B-29 and T-6 as well. All CAF Air Power History Tour events offer public rides for a fee. Ramp access is $10 for adults and $5 for children ages 11 through 17. Children under the age of 10 are free. The ramp will open from 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. each day. After these messages, Thrush boast about big numbers. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The 100th 510G to be completed by the Thrush since the aircraft received FAA certification in 2012 has hit the air. The Thrush 510G is powered by the GEH 80 turboprop engine, a first for both general aviation as well as the agricultural aviation industry. A staff sergeant at Marine Corps Base Quantico has pleaded guilty to stealing night vision equipment from the Marine One helicopter squadron and selling it on eBay. 34-year-old Brendan Baker stole at least 51 image intensifier tubes and other night vision parts worth approximately $94,392 from a department and agency of the United States, specifically from Marine Helicopter Squadron 1, a part of the Department of the Navy. On May 20th, the anniversary of famed aviator Charles Lindbergh's historic transatlantic flight from New York to Paris, Richard Pat Anderson, a professor of aerospace engineering and director of the Eagle Flight Research Center at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, received the Lindbergh Electric Aircraft Prize. 
A senior AIA official has been tapped to take a position at the FAA. Ali Barami, AII VP of Civil Aviation, was named as the FAA's Associate Administrator of Aviation Safety. That position became vacant when Margaret Gilligan retired earlier this year. Gilligan had been an FAA employee for 37 years, serving eight of those in the Associate Administrator post. James J. Jim Cannon has been appointed President and Chief Executive Officer of FLUR Systems, effective June 19, 2017. Mr. Cannon will succeed Andy Tisch, whose retirement after 33 years of service was previously announced on February 14, 2017. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. After some 30 years in development, a sequel to the movie Top Gun is set to begin shooting probably sometime next year. That was the bombshell dropped on the host of the Australian morning television program Sunrise last week. The Sunrise crew tweeted, at Tom Cruise just confirmed that Top Gun 2 is happening. I'm gonna start filming it probably in the next year. The movie was just gaining traction in 2012 when director Tony Scott passed away, which hangered the project again until producer Jerry Bruckheimer hired a screenwriter and production company Skydance came aboard. But Cruise has a busy schedule, including the Mission Possible 6, which is being filmed now, and MI6, which will be released next summer. But Top Gun 2 is next on his list, according to the report. It may be in theater sometimes in 2020 or 2021. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.